Hey, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this morning for the first webinar of our Medicare Morning Jolt uh, series. So we're going to talk about the basics of Medicare today and, you know, really show you how simple, straightforward uh, working with Medicare clients can be. And it's a great time if you're not in this market yet, it's a great time to get in. Um, and, you know, definitely there's tons of opportunities in this marketplace. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. But a few housekeeping items. I do want to tell you that everyone's lines are muted. And if you do have a question throughout the webinar, <clears throat> you can type that into the question bar in your control panel. So, and we will address those at the end of the call. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started. I know that everybody is very busy. So we want to keep this uh keep aware of the time sensitivity with everything. So today, um, I am the speaker, Kristen Burke, the National Marketing Coordinator here at Art Jetter & Company. Uh, I've got quite a few years of experience working in the Medicare market, um, not only here at Art Jetter & Company, but in past years working at uh, uh, some carriers. So uh, definitely uh, know a thing or two about the market, um, but kind of getting into Medicare. So we're just going to talk about the simplicity and just Medicare itself. So uh, social insurance program that was established in 1965. It does provide health coverage to more than 62 million individuals today. The majority of doctors and healthcare providers do accept Medicare. Now, who gets on to Medicare? Uh, you'll see and you'll run across maybe some individuals that are under the age of 65 who happen to have some disabilities. So they would actually get, uh, they would be eligible for Medicare under 65. So for an example, uh, someone that has uh, been on disability for at least 24 months uh, and receiving benefits from Social Security, they would automatically get and be enrolled in the Part A and the Part B of Medicare. Also, individuals that have ALS will automatically get Part A and Part B the month that their Social Security benefit begins. And then there's also individuals that have permanent kidney failure are eligible for Medicare. Where you're going to see the most of your uh, clients that are getting into Medicare is that baby boomer market, those individuals that are turning 65. Um, it's about 10,000, 11,000 individuals each and every day are getting into Medicare. So they're making that transition and they need help. Uh, there's a lot of confusion out there. Of what is Medicare? What do I need to get? Uh, you know, they're used to having coverage through their employer for all these years. And now it's really turned on to them of now you need to take care of yourself and make that transition. So they really do need assistance from agents that know the Medicare market and um, help them make that transition. So uh, there's a lots of individuals out there, a great market to be in. So let's break down all of the basics of Medicare. Um, what we're going to focus on here today for the majority of the presentation is the traditional Medicare component. And that's the piece that started in 1965. What makes up traditional Medicare is the Part A, hospital insurance, and Part B, medical insurance. Sorry about that. Um, and then outside of the traditional Medicare, you will see there's the Part C, which is Medicare Advantage plans. It's, in a sense, an alternative to traditional Medicare. So we're only going to slightly touch on that today um, on Medicare Advantage because that will be covered in another presentation in just a few weeks as well as then the Part D, which is the prescription drug plans. And that is, again, separate from traditional Medicare. And um, so we'll address that too in a webinar here coming up. So diving into the Part A of Medicare, uh, it is premium free when the beneficiary or spouse have 10 years or more of Medicare covered employment. If an individual is receiving a Social Security retirement income, uh, beneficiaries are automatically enrolled in the Part A of Medicare at uh, when they turn 65. If an individual has less than 10 years of Medicare covered employment, they can still pick up the Part A of Medicare. They would just have to pay a premium for that. So what does the coverage look like for Part A of Medicare? And I just want to pause for just a moment. A lot of uh, 
individuals out there think that, you know, I have worked very hard throughout my life. I've paid into Social Security. Uh, when I turn 65, I'm getting on Medicare and the government and Medicare is going to pay for all of my medical and I won't have any out-of-pocket expenses. Well, as you can see here on the slide, that's not the case. So uh, these figures that we're gonna run through are uh, for this year, for 2022, and these are the out-of-pocket expenses if one has the Part A of Medicare and they happen to go into the hospital or, or what have you. So uh, again, they need to know that they, because of being on the Part A of Medicare, there's still gonna be some costs that they are responsible for. So looking first off at the inpatient hospital care, if they are admitted into the hospital, this year that deductible is $1,556. Now Medicare will pay for the first 60 days of your hospital stay, but if you're still in the hospital on day 61 to day 90, you as an individual will be responsible for $389 per day. If you're still in the hospital on the 91st day to 150th, then you're responsible for $778 a day. If you're still in the hospital after the 150th day, uh, all costs will be your responsibility. Now looking at the skilled nursing, the first 20 days is covered by Medicare, but then on day 21 to day 100, the individual has to start paying out the 194.50 per day. And then after the 100th day of still receiving skilled nursing care, they would have to pay the full costs. For hospice, uh, the individual will have to pay a $5 outpatient prescription, um, $5 for all the outpatient prescription medications, as well as then 5% of the Medicare approved amount for inpatient hospice uh, respite care. So keep that in mind, as well as then uh, for blood, there may be instances where they would have to pay for the first three pints of blood, um, depending on that hospital. Now, looking a little bit deeper into the Part A of Medicare to give you some more insight, um, Medicare covers the semi-private rooms, meals, general nursing, drugs, and other hospital services and supplies, and that's a part of your inpatient treatment. Now, um, it's a key factor that you determine if you are in, if you're in the hospital, are you considered inpatient or are you outpatient? And that does affect how much you pay for hospital services and if you qualify for that Part A skilled nursing facility coverage, if you so happen to need that. So uh, if you, you know, or your spouse, if, if somebody is admitted to the hospital, it is very important to ask each and every day, um, ask the doctors, you know, maybe the, the social workers or patient advocacy that are you considered to be inpatient or outpatient? So you need to always check on that each day. And it really comes down to, because if you're gonna need some skilled nursing care after your hospital stay, Medicare only covers those services after a three-day minimum of hospital stay. Um, and it's medically necessary, it's an inpatient hospital stay for related illness or injury. So um, that's a huge trigger and that's something to be aware of. Uh, a lot of doctors may have somebody uh, in the hospital for a few days, just coded as observation. So that would not be considered as an inpatient. So that's something to be aware of as well. And then also for skilled nursing and therapies, it needs to be um, showing that it is necessary to maintain your current condition or, or improve that condition. So looking at the Part B of Medicare, um, there is a premium also with the Part B and this premium adjusts each year again. Uh, so this year, the average standard um, monthly Part B premium is $170.10, and that's for 2022. Now, there are some higher income earners that may have to pay an additional amount based on the income-related monthly adjustment amount. Um, so we can look at that chart in just a moment. Uh, but there is a late enrollment penalty if you do not enroll in the Part B at the time in which you are uh, getting into uh, turning 65 and picking up the Part A of Medicare. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, individuals may defer their enrollment in the Part B of Medicare if they are still uh, receiving you know, some, some coverages from their employer. But looking at, here is that IRMA chart. 
And again, this is all based on income that you had in 2020 will determine what you pay for this year in 2022. So I won't run through all these numbers, but this kind of gives you an idea um, of what that looks like. So what does the Part B coverage consist of? Uh, it's all those doctor services, outpatient care, preventative services, diagnostic tests, some therapies, durable medical equipment. So anything that's really kind of outside of the hospital or a skilled nursing facility, that's where it would fall under the Part B. There are some out-of-pocket costs um, associated. So you have the Part B premium, but then you're also going to have an annual deductible. And for this year, it's $233. So again, that is, you know, if you happen to go into the doctor uh, and you just have Part A and Part B, you're gonna have to pay that deductible right off the bat. And then after that deductible has been satisfied, uh, you may be uh, required to pay 20% coinsurance for most services. And those figures do change each year. So I'm also looking at the home health services, uh, Medicare covers home health services as long as you need part-time or intermittent skilled services, as long as you're homebound. So what does that really mean? Well, if you have trouble leaving your home without any help, maybe a wheelchair walker, um, any assistance from another person because of an illness or injury. Uh, leaving your home isn't recommended because of your current condition, or your uh, normally unable to leave your house because it's just a real struggle or major effort. So uh, as an individual, you pay nothing for the covered home health services. However, for Medicare covered durable medical equipment, you would pay that 20% for the Medicare approved amount. Um, and then that Part B deductible does apply. So that's looking at the home health services. Again, a lot of people think Medicare is gonna cover everything. That's not really the case. So I just wanted to lay out some examples of what Medicare does not cover. Again, this is just great to have in conversations with your, with your clients um, as you're talking about Medicare, because again, there's some misconceptions. So most dental services, that's really the one major one, or any eye exams. Um, unfortunately, as you get older, you might need dentures. Uh, and another big, factor and something to keep in mind is that Medicare does not cover long-term care. So um, keep that in mind too. So they think again that they're going to take care of all the, you know, Medicare will take care of you even though um, that is not the case. So we're getting a lot of this information in some of the handouts that we have um, in the menu bar too. So there's the uh, Medicare and You booklet. So a lot of this information was provided from there and uh, some great resources. So make sure before the call ends that you click on that handouts button tab within the, uh, the menu bar and you can save those attached files. Now, many of us have health savings accounts and how does that work when it, you have Medicare or when you go on Medicare? And something very important uh, to keep in mind. Now. Uh, it's great to have a health savings account because, you know, you can keep contributing into that. Maybe your employer contributes into that and you can use that for qualified medical expenses. So it's a great uh, savings account in a sense that you can utilize in the future. How, however, keep in mind that once you enroll in any part of Medicare, and that's A, B, C, or D, any part of Medicare, uh, you can no longer contribute uh, to your HSA. However, you can still take withdrawals from your HSA um, after you've enrolled to help pay for any medical expenses. So if you use the account for qualified medical expenses, it will continue to be tax-free. So again, something else just to keep in mind, uh, if you have a health savings account or your, your client does, um, how that works when they get into Medicare. So in the coming weeks, we will have a presentation that goes into uh, in-depth, you know, information in regards to Medicare Advantage or the Part C of Medicare. Just wanted to put this in here today and just remind you that Medicare Advantage is an alternative to traditional Medicare. 
So it will cover and it has to cover at least what the Part A and the Part B of traditional Medicare covers. But again, it's an alternative. So we won't spend a lot of time here today, but I just wanted to make sure that you're aware. Clients get very confused of, uh, of all the different pieces of Medicare, uh, get the terminology intertwined. So it's where you need to you know, step up and, and let them know that here's how it all works and here's how it's all broken down to bring some clarity uh, to the clients. Now there are different enrollments for Medicare and this is really pertaining to all different pieces of Medicare. So there's the initial election period and this applies to parts A, B, C, and D. Now it's three months before the month of an individual's 65th birthday or the month that they turn 65 and up to three months after their 65th birthday. So during that initial election period, then they can enroll with no penalties, um, no questions asked. Then there's the general enrollment period. So if you happen to miss that initial election period, you can apply every year. Uh, there's that window, January 1st to March 31st, and then their Medicare would be effective July 1st. Now the annual enrollment period, which you probably hear a lot of that buzz in the industry, and it gets crazy come October 15th to December 7th, that's the AEP or annual enrollment period. And that's all centered around Medicare Advantage and prescription drug plans. So think of it similar to if you were on your group health plan that each year, each fall, your company evaluates uh, what plan should we, should we stay with our current plan or should we transition into a new plan? And that's the same philosophy that applies with the annual enrollment period. So this is where um, seniors have the ability to, if they're on a Medicare Advantage plan today, do I need to switch to a new one? Should I stay on my current one? Um, they can go through and meet with the agents and talk about that. And same applies with the prescription drug plans. So they can enroll and make those changes uh, without any underwriting during that time period um, and no, you know, um, so it gets very, very hectic. And that's really centered around not original Medicare, um, around the Medicare Advantage or prescription drugs. Uh, then there's a special election period. And this is if someone would lose their group coverage from their employer. So then they do have a 60 day window that they can um, enroll into Medicare and get into some Medicare additional coverages. So that's a 60 day window from the date of the termination of that coverage. There's tons of other different, uh, we call them SEP or special election periods out there as well, different scenarios. So we can definitely help you with that. Um, every client's situation can be a little bit different, a little unique. So we can definitely help with that. And then um, January 1st to March 31st, that last bullet there is called the Medicare Advantage Open Enrollment Period. So if you have someone that's on a Medicare Advantage plan, uh, and this is only for Medicare Advantage clients, and they're not happy with that plan, they have the ability during this time period, that open enrollment period, to switch to another plan. So um, again, it's that's only centered around Medicare Advantage plans. So I know that these, uh, these different time frames or periods pertain to not only A, B, but also C and D. Uh, so it can be a little confusing, but we can definitely help with that um, to kind of tell you what experience your client is going through at the present time. So uh, next meeting that we'll have is March 8th at 10 a.m. Central Time and where we'll be discussing Medicare settlement plans and prescription drug plans. So I'm gonna highlight those really quick. And, um, but again, join us if you haven't registered for the next uh, Medicare Morning Jolt presentation. It will be on March 8th at 10 a.m. Central Time. And we're gonna talk about, again, Medicare settlements and prescription drug plans. So if you're not familiar with Medicare settlement plans, um, they rolled out uh, at about, just right after Medicare began. So I know, for an example, uh, one of the carriers we work with uh, started selling Medicare settlement plans in 1966. So Medicare started in 1965, and then they uh, rolled their supplemental product out um, that very next year. So what do Medicare supplement plans do? They cover all those copays, deductibles, uh, coinsurances that I walked through um, for the Part A and the Part B of Medicare. 
So really then you only have your part B premium to pay and then your Medicare supplement premium and maybe um, you know a little bit of out-of-pocket expenses beyond that. Um, and we'll get into more depth about that too, but uh, Medicare supplement plans are very, very popular. It gives the clients peace of mind. They can uh, pick up a Medicare supplement plan and any provider that accepts Medicare would accept a Medicare supplement plan. So it's great for snowbirds or individuals who travel a lot, um, gives them great peace of mind. Uh, so there's no unexpected expenses um, that they will have to cover. And then Medicare supplement plans are guaranteed renewable. And so as long as they pay their premiums, uh, that carrier cannot cancel their coverage. And then the prescription drug plans. This is going to be the other component that we'll talk about in the webinar on March 8th. It is considered the Part D of Medicare. Uh, so many years ago, traditional Medicare did offer some drug coverage um, and Medicare supplements as well. So then they pulled that all out and they actually uh, made a different component of Medicare, if you will, and they made the Part D, which is the prescription drug plans. They are now offered by private insurance companies, similar to Medicare supplement plans. Um, so private insurance companies, and there's a premium for that. There are different tiered drugs and copays that, um, based on the medications that they would have to, uh, that they would cover, as well as then you can have a Part D standalone plan, or you may have drug coverage built into your Medicare Advantage plan. So we will talk about all those basics there. If your client is turning 65, they're getting into Medicare, they have to enroll in a drug plan, even if they're on one medication or they're not taking any medications they have to enroll in a prescription drug plan you can get them on the simplest basic plan um, but if they don't there will be a late enrollment penalty fee that would uh, they'll have to pay for the rest of their life for um, the, the drug plans so it's very important to get that added right away so again we're going to talk on the next webinar on march 8th medicare supplement plans and prescription drug plans and um, hope you found this beneficial. And uh, we do have some great technology and tools to assist you um, with um, looking at all of these you know, Medicare plans and what would work for your client. And we also have a great, very knowledgeable uh, marketing team that can help here, uh, help you with any questions that you have and situations your client may be uh, in when it comes to Medicare. So you can contact any of us here on the senior health team and we would be happy to assist you. You can always give us a call at the number on the screen, 800-228-0008, or you can send us an email at seniorhealth at jetter.com and we'd be happy to assist. So we also offer tons of different lines of business outside of Medicare. So they're all listed on the left-hand side of the screen. And we have uh, market specialists that focus in all of these areas. So here to help you, we're not just in the Medicare market, we're really in all lines of business outside of ACA or PNC. We've been working with agents since 1979. And we also have case management. We have an in-house underwriter that um, will definitely help with any health conditions or medications that your clients may be taking. So definitely use all these resources. We are here to help and we offer some great incentives. We've got some good ones running right now. So make sure when you talk to the marketers, you, you ask about the incentives. Uh, and we also offer the top cop and we work with the top carriers in the industry. So uh, I'm gonna take a moment here and see if there's any types of questions that are coming across here. Uh, so somebody is asking if we can get a copy of the presentation and yes, for sure. We will send this recording out to you uh, so that you can have this for your files. Also another question came in. If you have a client that is on a Medicare Advantage plan, can they switch to a Medicare supplement? And the answer is yes, they can definitely do that. They would just 
uh, most situations, uh, they might have to go through the underwriting process. So there's certain circumstances that they would not have to go through underwriting if they're switching from Medicare Advantage to a Medicare supplement, but most of the time they would. So we can help with that if you've got someone in that situation here today. Um, but if they, you know, without getting too far in the weeds there, but we can definitely help with that. Okay, and then someone is asking um, about the, the pieces. So if you look on your menu bar where you had, had typed in the questions for the GoToWebinar, you'll see uh, a tab that says Handouts. So there might be an arrow next to the word Handouts on the left-hand side. If you just click on that arrow, then you're gonna see we've got, we attached five different handouts that talk about Medicare. If you are not able to um, access those handouts, for whatever reason, you know, let us know and we would be happy to send those over to you and answer any questions that you may have. Any other questions that are coming through? Love the questions though. And like I said, this is a great time. Where I see a lot of the new agents getting in, if they, they're new to Medicare, maybe you focused on the life market for a long time or uh, long-term care or DI or annuities. Um, maybe your clients are now turning 65 and you know you need to assist them. That is the best time to help and the easiest time for you to help your clients um, make that transition. So you might wonder, how do I get in this market? Well, if you have a book of business and if you're able to see when are they turning 65, if it's, you know, you start tripping on them. Typically, uh, individuals start getting information uh, from agents, agencies, um, around their 64th birthday. So from the 64th birthday to the 65th birthday, they are getting a ton of information in the mail, phone calls, everyone wanting to help. And if that's happening to one of your clients, you know, you want to assist them versus a complete stranger. So, and then you can do, uh, sign them up into Medicare and uh, assist them with that process, as well as then you can maybe assist them getting into a Medicare supplement plan. And if you get in the Medicare supplement plan at the time in which you're turning 65, you don't have to answer any health questions. So it's a really easy, simple, um, uh, transactional process, um, and it's an easy way to get into the market. So if you're wondering how to get into the Medicare supplement market, I would first look at your book of business and seeing who, what clients are 63, 64, and then you start dripping on them. Um, so if you have any questions on that, definitely let us know, we are here to help. So I don't see any other questions, but again, join us. March 8th at 10 a.m. Central Time, where we'll be talking about Medicare supplement plans and prescription drug plans. So I hope you all enjoyed this presentation. And uh, if there's any questions later today, tomorrow, next week, we're here to help. Please reach out. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care.